Welcome back to this episode. If you missed the last one, in the last episode I was talking about recession stocks, companies to buy in when the recession happens and people lose money. And yesterday, all the companies I looked at, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, Five Below, all went up and then Walmart hit an all-time high. Now, a recession trade is a long-term trade, so chances are these will go down before they go back up. So don't. that's not a buy recommendation now, but that's great news for the channel. If you like this kind of stuff, um, like, subscribe, uh, comment, and I'll comment back. But today, we're talking about Ferrari. If you watched yesterday's episode, we were comparing inferior products, so dollar stores, and I picked up on the opposite, which was Ferrari, the opposite of an inferior product for, for the rich and so on and so forth. So today, I thought we would go through Ferrari and see if we can figure out what's going to happen with the value of the company by the end of this year. So as always, the first question on this channel is who? Who is Ferrari? We've all heard of this company before. And I've got here, Ferrari is really about its people, which is why it will continue long after I'm gone. That's from Enzo Ferrari. Here, this woman is screaming, Ferrari is passion. Okay, uh, driver standings for the F1 so far. This is why we're picking up on it because the F1 season has started. And Ferrari are in one, two. If you go down the list, Max Verstappen, Red Bull, British team, Russell, Hamilton, British, the Alpine team, British, Red Bull, British, yeah, I'm seeing a trend here. Uh, this is when Ferrari wins Monza. People scream with passion how much they love Ferrari. And I think there's a correlation. If Ferrari win this year, which chances are they might, then the stock will go up and we'll go into more details as the video continues. This is Ferrari stock over the last year. Now, if you look at December 2021, it absolutely rocketed. And that was on this news here. Ferrari ship two 750 cars in three months up from 2313. So they sold more Ferraris and the share price went up. So is the same going to happen again this year if Charles Leclerc and the other dude win the um, championship? My bet is yes. So if I look at this stock price forecast here, 18 analysts, 12 month price forecast with a median target of 255. Right now it's at 203, so we'll call it 200 for simplicity. And if you look at this chart here, they're saying it could potentially go to 350, a 58% jump, that's massive. Uh, the average is 255, and then some are saying it's gonna go lower. So if we look back at the pre-season testing for Ferrari, we're saying uh, Verstappen seeks blistering benchmarks to go on top on final day. Uh, there's some articles about Ferrari being the outsider three weeks ago. However, the Formula 1 season is a very long season. There's over 20 races throughout the year. It's all still to play for, so we'll have to wait and see. Now, you don't need me to show you a picture of Ferrari. We all know what it is. Got a picture here for 355, one for sale for 135,000. Now, what I'm interested in is where are these Ferraris being sold? Now, here from the financial statements I've got on the far left-hand side, the 2021 column, uh, the percentage of the locations that the cars are being sold. At the bottom, I've highlighted rest of APAC, America Pacific uh, region. 17.3% of the cars are being sold there, but 25% are going to the Americas. That's the largest proportion of where the cars are going. Okay, Ferrari US sales. It's been very stable. I know in the US you have something called NASCAR, which looks awesome. By the way, I don't think Ferrari competes in that. We put up this article here, China's creating new billionaires much faster than the US, but America's super rich to control more wealth than the Far Eastern counterparts. Okay, so if I go down to Ferrari investor information, financial and corporate calendar. Now this is where things get interesting. We've got the group results for the fourth quarter here, uh, the financial 20 with 21 results here, and there's actually a webcast you can listen to. It's about an hour long. It's by this guy here, the new CEO of Ferrari. In the first five minutes, he's talking about that this is the first time Ferrari's ever passed 4 billion in revenue. There's been 11,000 cars sold. Sales have doubled in China already. 40% uh, EBITDA, earnings before interest, tax depreciation, amortization. Very important. Order book is up to double digits. All regions are showing significant growth. He goes on to say about new and existing customers, margin contributions, order intake, and there's a strong economic climbing for pre owned cars. Customer enthusiasm, people sharing their passion. They've also got this ESG milestone, a DNV ISO 14064, something to do with carbon emissions. That's great uh, for Ferrari. And in the first, I only listened to the first five or 10 minutes, but it's all 
positive. It sounds like the company knows who they are, where they're going, what's going to happen next. Very, very positive from the company. The company sounds like they know what they're going to do next. Uh, this is when he was appointed in June 2021. So this is his first financial year end. He's been the CEO. And one of the reasons of focusing on the CEO of the company is because he's in charge. He's going to set the direction of the company, who they are, where they're going, what they're working on. If you go back a couple of years, Nike actually appointed a new CEO here. Uh, Nike CEO Mark Parker is stepping down, replaced by former eBay chief executive John Donahoe. And I managed to download this high-res photo of him. If you go onto nike.com and look at his profile, there's actually a little button below his, below his picture saying download high res. Now, why would a sports company like Nike have something like that on their website? Well, it's because they got somebody from eBay in charge. I imagine that would be quite a new feature. I'd be surprised if that was there three or four years ago. They're trying to be a technology company, you know, to keep up with my assumption, you know, the rest of the world. So the significant events here, if we go down, we've got results in May, August, and November. Now, by November the 2nd of this year, most of the races will be over. There'll be two races left, so the championship might be tied up already. What I am interested in is the race in Monza in Italy, which is happening on September the 9th to the 11th. That will be a massive turning point. If Ferrari win and they're ahead in the championships, they are going to start selling more Ferraris from that point in time. Everyone's going to know who they are. It's going to be all over the papers, everywhere. Chances are the same thing will happen this year as it did last year. This is the chart I showed you earlier. Other important information, Ferrari FA order book is already closed. So they've got a pipeline of, of new orders coming through. And then I saw this. I thought this was quite interesting. When you Google Ferrari, this comes up. Automobile company, founded headquarters, that's it. But if you look at Porsche, there's a description pulled from Wikipedia. If you look at Lamborghini, there's a description pulled from Wikipedia. If you look at Koenigsegg, there's a description pulled from Wikipedia, but not for Ferrari. Why? Have they done that? Have they tried to create this image of, of passion where you don't need Wikipedia to explain who they are? Do you remember that movie, Knocked Up? came out years and years ago. In the movie, they used the phrase Google it a couple of times. And in this clip here, you can see not only is there product placement for the Volkswagen, I assume this was before the Volkswagen emission scandal, but the child is talking about how she Googled murder. Now, is it me or was that put there? Or were they paid to say that? And this is the kind of stuff, the information to look for to understand who the company is. How do they see themselves and what do they believe about what they're doing. When you understand that, you can understand the company's behavior and you can predict outcomes. And by focusing on the who of the company, you can get a better idea of long-term outcomes. You know, what's gonna happen with Apple? They're just gonna create great products because that's who they are. Tesla, pioneered electric vehicles. They'll be around for a long time. Which company will be still be here in a thousand years? Probably Disney. Disney will never die. There's quite a lot to put in this video, uh, but we're talking about the risks of the business. We're talking about if Ferrari win, and their order book is full. Mercedes, uh, the F1 team, won't give up. What's going to happen at Monza at the end of the year? There's a lot of moving factors to predict what's going to happen in the future. There is a race in two weeks' time, the first race in Italy. My bet is, with Formula 1, if Ferrari win this race, which will be, I think, the fourth race of the season, chances are they'll win the whole championship. If we look at the price today, it's €202. Euros. And my main argument here is the passion of Ferrari. I wouldn't be saying this about Honda, Toyota, anything, but Ferrari is different. They've carved out their own market. Ferrari is passion. And I found this article online here, Top 100 Global Brands Love Lists. eBay, Amazon, Facebook, really? Disney, the Disney number six, there you go. If you don't know much about Disney, this is the companies that Disney owns. All these little circles represent companies under the Disney brand. It's, it's monumental. It's just, just absolutely ridiculous. Go further down the list, Honda, 33, Burger King, 87. And this is what we mean by cool brands that people know and how that will move all the market. So what I predict is, I think from where we are at roughly 200, the stock could go 25% higher. If we look at the market capitalization of the company, down at the bottom in the middle, market cap 38.73 billion. So we're saying the company is going to go 25% higher, which is 9 billion from Ferrari winning the Formula One this year. 
Please note your capital is at risk, and I've only been making this channel for about a week. But my bet is that if that does happen, if they win in Imola next week, chances are they win the season. If they win Monza, then things will start happening, and they'll post results like they did last year, and they'll beat expectations, and the share price will go up. So that will leave us at about 250 for the share price. And that is the end of today's Yellow Brick Road. Thank you for joining me and tune in in two weeks' time for the race in Imola to see what happens there. And I pick up on this again in the future. Adios. See the wizard.